Hey, what's going on, everybody? Listen, the snow is about to drop here in the DMV, but this this thing, you know, hit my mind again. And one of the reasons, or a couple of reasons, why uh, Africa travel is discouraged and why Africa has been so mischaracterized over the years is really twofold. Uh, one reason why, because all the resources are there. That the chocolate bars that we're eating, it says Belgian chocolate, but I guarantee you some of that chocolate has come from uh, Africa. It didn't come from Belgium. They're not growing cocoa in Belgium, all right? And Swiss in Switzerland, they're not growing cocoa beans in Switzerland like that. So they're, nine times out of 10, they're getting it from somewhere on the continent of Africa, probably Ivory Coast or Ghana, maybe Uganda, maybe Nigeria. It's, it's in all over the place. But the, the rubber from them tires, you can find in Liberia, you got bauxite, uranium, gold, oil, copper, silver. Everything you need is in Africa. And so many of the things, luxuries that we have benefit from the continent of Africa. So if you know this and you are able to discover it, then it could pose a, a potential problem, especially if you're someone who is an investor or someone who understands business. Um, so they have to make it undesirable psychologically. And so there are a couple of things. A lot of people don't ever think about traveling there for vacation. I know I didn't. I didn't even, it wasn't, wasn't even a consideration. It was always someplace European, someplace that, that, that had been branded by the media or by travel um, folks for years. And then when I went there and I found out, oh, wait a minute, they, they have everything. I mean, five-star accommodations. I mean, just the, some of the most spectacular places that you'll ever see are on the continent of Africa and it, all over Africa. So not just in one part of Africa, but all over. I mean, I saw five-star accommodations in Lagos, Nigeria. I saw five-star accommodations in Accra, Ghana, in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, in Cairo, Egypt, in Tanzania, in South Africa. I mean, I'm just going back through some of the places that I've been and I saw really, and when I say nice, and I'm even careful about that because even that's using like a European standard as for nice. And that's even a trick there, you know, because it's like, well, who said, who set that standard to say that that's nice, but that's what we know. Those of us from the Western culture, that's, those are the things that we're accustomed to. The other reason why uh, I firmly believe Africa is discouraged, especially for those who are part of the African diaspora, because if you discover the truth, it changes your whole mindset. And a lot of emphasis is placed on mental health and, and all of those different things. But for those of us who are part of the African diaspora across the world, what when, when you have a disconnect from your genetic origins, and obviously most of us are not 100% African, but uh, a large percentage of us is, is uh, our genetic uh, makeup is from the continent of Africa. When you have that cultural disconnect, it does something to you and you don't even realize it's doing it to you. And that's that, that's what I see more and more of when people say, well, I'm not African, I'm American. I'm like, well, what is American? You know, <laughs> what, what is American? It, it, and that's the part that, you know, people, they'll, they'll come up with something and they'll say something, they'll try to debate you about it. But when you really look at what the core foundational elements of America happen to be, it's all rooted in theft, lies, murder, deception, uh, and basically conquest, when you look at those who were indigenous and how their culture, the, the attempt of the erasure of their culture occurred. And then for those who were brought from other parts of the world to build up the wealth of what we know as America, when you begin to put the context of that story together, anyone with, with like good sense cannot just dismiss that and say, oh, well, it happened, you know, just get over it. It's not something that you get over unless you understand the context of it. It's something that you might be able to repair, but getting over it is like, is like a, it's, 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 it doesn't even make sense because it's still going on. The system has been put in place and it's like a, it's like a, like I didn't talk about the machine. It's like a machine that's constantly working. So you're not getting over a system that is constantly trying to uh, impose itself on people who just are unaware. Even now when you start seeing this revisionist history and let's take this out of the classroom so that it doesn't do this or, or cause people to feel uncomfortable. Now, what it's doing, it is dumbing down another generation from being able to know the truth. And so when people get into these confusing states, and this is what I see with a lot of people from the African diaspora in America, it's like confusion but without realizing that it's confusion. It's like it's a weird kind of state of mind to be in like, well, I'm black, I'm not African, I'm this, I'm that. And so culturally, 
what we've had to do is adapt to a a morph of a culture for most of us that has been created and even like many aspects of what we know as black culture have been approved by uh european standards and so even we it's, it's like that blending of it's like a really interesting kind of mix but when you go back to africa and you begin to see the similarities in the indigenous and you go and you sense it what it does is it can for a lot of people it helps to improve the mental health because you know you're not, you're no longer confused you understand much of what happened and what i desire to do this is why i take people is like let's get the context of the story and then if you give me the context of the story, then I'll be able to uh, appropriate my, my black culture with my stolen African culture, with my stolen indigenous culture for whichever area, and even reconcile it uh, with my uh, European uh, genetic aspects. You know, so, so those things, when it starts coming together, you now can break it down in a way where it's like okay like now when i come back nobody you know like somebody come back to me say man go back to africa i'm like cool i got i'm good in africa i'm good here i got ancestors that bled and died here in america i got ancestors in africa um i got ancestors in europe however i you know i don't know i got i got confederate ancestors i got union ancestors i got ancestors all over i got indigenous ancestors and so that's just the makeup of who i am and i show up differently i don't show up confused i'm not sitting here like man i wonder i'm this it's like because i've seen it and nobody can take it from me i don't care if they argue about slave ships wonder where slave ships are. I tell them all the time. You want to know where the slave ships are? Go look for where the colonizer ships are. You find the slave ships right there. When people try to tell me, well, you know that you're not this and you're, you're, you're actually uh, indigenous and you're not from Africa and you're this and the slave trade didn't happen and this didn't happen. I'm saying, look, I'm a melting pot of all of it. So I got indigenous in me. I have Africa in me. I have all it. So, so, so trying to peg me into one place isn't going to work. And that's the beautiful part about being a part of the African diaspora for many people is that we come, we come from so many different places. So I, I posted my whole thing about bridging the gap on, um, um, you know, and, and I had, I had, you know, my hand where I was, you know, on both continents. Somebody's like, well, you're not a descendant of America because, you know, how can you descend from some place where you were transplanted? I said, well, I got indigenous in me too. So guess what? I descend from what we know as America as well. Person deleted the comment, you know, it was like, so you, you it, again, when you know your stuff, when people try to come for you with foolishness, then you can step to them and say, look, you can't identify who I am because you haven't put the work into this this genetic makeup right here, this DNA right here, you have not put the work into. And so I'm not going to allow you to identify me. Now, you might be confused and you might be going through that whole thing, but I'm quite comfortable with exactly who I am. I love my African culture and all of the melting pot of West Africa, all of it, because the genetics show all of it. And then uh, and then even my black culture. And so I come back and say, man, there's just certain things. And that's the beautiful part, y'all. What I try to encourage people to do and inspire people to do is embrace who you are. You don't have to go embrace somebody else's identity. Forget cult forget the culture of when I say this meaning, the cultural things that people have taught you, the negative things that they have said, this has all been by design to cause you to dislike yourself and to try to identify as something other than who you are. You are who you are. That is how you were created. And there is nothing wrong with that. And so when you embrace that, you show up differently. People can't toy with your mind. Somebody can't come toy with my mind with the way they used to before because I was just trying to figure it out. Now, when it's almost like I, I, I enjoy uh, every time I go discover something new. And it's not something where I'm trying to find myself. It's like this is just a part of me that I'm discovering and I'm learning. And so that's the beautiful part about it. So I encourage everybody in this journey, y'all, just know there's so much mind game, so many, so much trickery, so much foolery going on. And best way to, to rule that stuff out is to go see for yourself. That's the bottom line. You got all types of YouTube theories and all kind of stuff happening. I tell people the way that you challenge it, the way you check it, go see for yourself. That's the bottom line. Go see for yourself. And so for me, it was worth it. Climb Kilimanjaro. It was worth it. I climbed Kilimanjaro. And that's what I want to talk about in my documentary. Climb Kilimanjaro to be able, because when I went to Ghana and I was at the door of no return, 
what that meant was that the, those people who went through those doors and places like that along the coast of West Africa, because I might not have had any ancestors to come through Elmina or Cape Coast. They might've gone through Gory Island. They might've gone through somewhere in um, uh, Angola. But the point is that they went through places like that. There were hundreds of places like that along the coast of West Africa where people were exported like sugar and corn and all these other things. And, and so they were never supposed to come back from a financial perspective, they were never supposed to come back. But I was back. And at that point, I was like, I'm gonna to climb to the tallest mountain in Africa. And guess what, I'm gonna bring more people back. And that's the other reason why people don't want you, why they wanna paint a negative picture of Africa. Because if Africa was so bad, why do you have so many people who are not, who have no genetic connection to Africa, building their wealth, building everything, their, their dream life is somewhere on the continent of Africa, whether it's in the West, whether it's in the East, the North, the South, the Central, they're building their dream. But for those of us who are part of the African diaspora, it's been demonized so bad that we don't even want to associate it with, with it for so many of us. A lot of us are waking up, and that's what I'm saying. Wake up, y'all. Wake up. What, what, what we have been sold is only a part of the story. And when you begin to see it, that's all I'm saying. S see it with non-colonized eyes, and that takes a whole lot because I'm filtering that mess out myself. But when you begin to see it and you begin to say, wait a minute, there's more to this story. There's a level of confidence and freedom that comes. And I'm like, again, and I'll leave it at this. One other reason why it's a negative or it's portrayed negatively is because if the people who descend from there understood the real story and understood their real power, and began to take their real resources back and invest and connect those dots, it would cause a problem on a level that people would not be able to handle. And so the way that it works is to keep confusion going, to keep lies going, to keep misinformation going, to keep information away from people so they don't get it. Uh, for many people who are part of the African diaspora in America, in other parts of the world too, the Caribbean and down in South uh, South America, where the largest population of Africans outside of Africa reside, when you be, when you begin to understand that their whole goal, their whole goal is to make sure that that system stays in place, and where you stay working, paying off or paying debt, and staying in these systems, getting caught up in the massive crazy student loans and all of that kind of stuff, to where you don't even have the time to go discover, where you don't even have the resources in your mind. You tell yourself you don't have the resources to go discover, or in your mind, it's not even priority because they've made Africa so undesirable that you don't even want to go. You'd rather go to Hawaii. You'd rather go to Paris and go feed the beast. You'd rather go to London to feed the beast. You'd rather go to Lisbon. You'd rather go to uh, 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 Rome and feed the beast. And so when I say feed the beast, meaning these are the very entities that robbed, killed, destroyed the cultures and all of that. But yet we have been trained like dogs to go back and give them, here master, come on, here, let me give you some money, let me go back. But when it comes time to go, when it comes time to go learn about the history and culture, we don't want to go to Benin. We don't want to go to Togo. We don't want to go to these places. I heard it was bad. I heard it was bad over there. You better not go over there. You better go where it's, you know, where it's good. And without even understanding that it's not bad, like what they say, parts everywhere has pockets and cultural issues and challenges, but not the whole freaking continent. With over a billion people. The whole freaking continent? Come on, y'all. And then we don't have enough sense to even ask, why is it like that? Is it just corrupt governments? Come on. Where do these governments come from? Where do these governments come from? The daggone French created the governments in all the Francophone countries, all the Anglophone countries. The British created the governments and they just installed people into it. That's why you got people wearing, you got black people wearing white people's wigs in, in, the, in the judicial system because that's a system that was created by, by, the, by the colonizers. But yet we embrace it. Yes, we suck on the breast of that stuff and we say, this is the pinnacle. This is what we want. This is who we are. This is what, it's like, no, that's not who we are. And that's what they've done on the continent. So we all got stuff we gotta work out. But once we begin to educate ourselves and tell ourselves the truth, as comfortable as, as uncomfortable as the truth might be, that's when 
we talk about being set free. And so there's nothing like being set free. So now when I see Swiss chocolate, I know, say, you know, why don't they put on there that that chocolate came from uh, Cote d'Ivoire? Why don't they put on there that chocolate came from Uganda? The oil. Why don't they, you know, why, 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 most people don't know where the oil comes from anyway, because it comes from all over the world. But, but understanding the value of Nigeria and all of this. Why don't we see that? The rubber that's out of Liberia. The Firestone plant and stuff like that that's in those places. Why don't we see that? Why the gold mine, you know, the jeweler has the gold, but we don't know where the gold really comes from. All of the different uh, minerals and resources and salt and, and uh, all this stuff that comes, the iron for the Eiffel Tower. Nobody gives credit to Algeria for that. No one does. But they go to France and they suck on France's breast. Oh, I'm in France. I'm in France. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, give me some, I'm in Spain. I'm in this, that, and the other. And we have been so indoctrinated with this stuff that we diss our part, the African part of it. Fine, go celebrate all these different places, they're beautiful and all of that. But why do we diss Africa? Because we've been conditioned to do it. And so those of us who are waking up, that's don't won't do that. That's why I won't spend my time trashing Africa because it's been done done for over 500 years. That's why when I see people throwing shade at it, and especially people who descend from there in a non-constructive way, because granted, I'm not opposed to constructive criticisms and all that, but I'm talking about from a non-constructive way, and you just have people out here, you know, really acting like niggas, really. That, and, and again, I use the word in context, y'all, because I know some people don't like the word. I'm using it in context because that's when people do that, that's what they're acting like. If they don't have something constructive to do, and they're just out there trashing the continent because they're trying to make a dollar and they're trying to hustle the system and they're trying to exploit people's offenses and all of that because that's really that's what goes on. People get offended with something, somebody else chimes in, they exploit it, and then they run with it. That's being a nigga. So that's just that's it is what it is. And it is what it is. Um so anyway, listen, 2022 is here. Let's wake up. Let's do what we gotta do. Go see for yourself. All right. More content on the way. I'm excited about it. I'm glad to be able to just share a little bit. I'm going to break that down even more. I'm going to show the dynamics and the resources and how it's just by design. The way that the Western world does it by design is to make sure that Africa stays poor in certain parts. And, uh, oh, and this is the other part. Some people actually, like a lot of people fight when they say, which country is the best country in Africa? And sadly, what they the, the, the standard they use is the West. So who, whichever colonizer, wherever the colonizer invested the most money <laughs> they use, they say, that's the best. It's like, y'all see, our minds, are, without even thinking about it on a cultural level, we have been so twisted. And, and then we go look for America and Africa and miss out on Africa because we're so busy looking for how we've been conditioned. Anyway, I'm going to leave it right there today. Subscribe, like, share. This is just the beginning. Um, I don't know how this video lasts for however long. Let's decolonize our minds and let's celebrate. Let's celebrate this part of our culture and our heritage while not ignoring the other parts of our culture and heritage. All right, until next time, be safe. Take care. Open up your eyes and see all the fun and mystery. Take an African adventure with Dan and Destiny. From the mountains to the shore. The Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family 
uh, do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on a children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do. And as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.